Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Show Out of a Comic Book. I'm your host, Will Farrow. We are back again, the safe haven for entertainers, comedians, entrepreneurs, gangsters, all those cats, even, even mobsters when I start meeting some more of them. This is a safe place to talk about comic books, comic book movies, and just all around nerd stuff. This is the safe place for it. And of course, I got my uh homies young dudes and Dion Lack, DC Lack here today. And we uh we got a lot to talk about today. We got a lot to yeah. talk about. We're breaking this into section so much that we're gonna have uh CT joining us uh, a little bit later on because we're talking DC news. DC news, man. James Gunn dropped a big announcement on what the DC future is going to be, and we have got to discuss it once CT gets up in here. But we're going to start off with one of my first segments, as y'all know, um, except for yourself, uh, Deuce. I've broken this into segments now. This is a real, legit show. Yeah. It's not just an hour talk. All right. You know what I'm saying? We got segments like our hot topic of today. And our hot topic is going to be leading to a little game that we are going to be playing in just a minute. But today's hot topic, Avatar 2, Avatar 2 Wakanda <laughs> Forever, is now on Disney+. Plus. Um, people call it Wakanda Forever, but I say Avatar 2 Wakanda <laughs> Forever. Because y'all seen it. They got seen it. it man. It's mad sim- similarities. <laughs> mad similarities. There's a whole bunch of black people getting chased by uh, blue people. Those blue people are also getting chased. And somehow there's always a white man involved. And, and <laughs> Julianne Dreyfus is in this as well. Just yeah. with a blue hair streak that don't make no fucking sense. But <laughs> she out here. But fellas, I gotta ask. I know y'all did go to the theaters to see Wakanda Forever. Um, so I gotta know. Rewatch value. Now this on streaming services. Are y'all gonna be running Wakanda Forever back? I watched it yesterday. <laughs> I ran it back too. I, I, <laughs> Y'all midnighted it? Yeah. Um, I, well, well, while I was editing, I was like, ooh, I was like, let me throw it on and run it back. And yeah. But I fast forward all the dialogue. I went right to the action scenes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do all that. But, but here, here's, here's, here's the, here's the, the, what I don't want to be excited about. There was a site that I don't want to mention that usually finds the uh, the the copyrighted version of the movie. So I watched that a lot when it first came out. Okay, like right after it was when the movie's in theaters. Yeah, and you see like the blurred like uh, copyright thing that they all want to. Yeah. <laughs> so I watched that a couple of times, and I was like, all right, I, I got familiar with the dialogue, and I was like, I was actually in, into the. To the action so when it came in hd 4k i watched it again with the you know see if they added some deleted scenes or something like that but mm-hmm. you know um, yeah i think they do have some deleted scenes uh, mm-hmm. available for you to uh, go check out yeah. the extra features have on the streaming service yeah because like you know in my rewatch like i'll just realize i was like yo hey man it's like it's with what kind of forever it's hard to call it a win because that was a that was though that fight. I forgot how much we we won by the skin of our teeth in that fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. Like, the num- the num- the numbers on that boat of black people and blue people got real <laughs> uneven. And sh- and like I said, it, it technically, I mean, like maybe I say it's the suit and the herb. I don't know, but like, sure, she got she got impaled. That yeah. thing went through her. I was like, yo, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What I what I what I what I didn't like. It's when we all see how powerful those water bombs are. Man, they put like 600 up on that Noah Ark. <laughs> Why wow. did it not sink? Well, probably because it's vibranium. I'm assuming the ship is made by vibranium. Sure. At the same time, they're being they're being swamped from all areas. Yeah. <laughs> and they still survive. Word. Wow. First off, also, I got to throw in there because we did talk about the good. So I like to call these parts our opportunities instead of the bad part. Opportunities of where it could have been better. That's how, that's what yeah. Apple taught me instead of when they tell us, instead of saying, how you fucking up. It's like, here's your opportunity. <laughs> Show up on time. Yeah. There's an opportunity there. Yeah. Um, I don't like that they didn't give whales no action in this. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I felt like that was kind of like fish races because why <laughs> didn't the whales knock that boat over? Yeah, <laughs> what what sharks could have did some damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean y'all y'all rocking with the sea creatures like y'all Aquaman. So well, hey, yeah. that, that, that maybe that's the difference between Namor and Aquaman. Aquaman he weaponized the 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 animals in the sea. Namor probably he doesn't. So maybe that's the difference. So he just enslaved them and make them ride on the backs. <laughs> The Turn them into Uber way. drivers. That's what he did. Turn them into straight Ubers, man. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, what's funny is, I, before we record this, I actually had just finished watching it too. Um, I just noticed Angela Bassett cut her dreads. Oh, you just noticed that? I had just noticed that. I was like, oh. yo, she she got the little. You know what? Yeah, I think I just I, I just realized that too because she always had the hat on. So I was yeah. I, uh, I I didn't realize she cut her dreads. Yeah, she showed yeah. it. I remember when she um when she uh was talking to uh t uh Trevor Noah's character on um I mean the voice yeah oh, like, the AI, uh, yeah wasn't it Grio uh was uh, and she had the little afro and I was like yes <laughs> daddy <laughs> daddy <laughs> like I said my my like still to this day though I just feel like like bro they didn't have to kill they didn't have to kill Angela Bassett's character. I felt like we you our heart was already ripped out. Like why are y'all why are y'all ripping it out further? Like yeah, but, I, but like yeah. they really brought us down because when you watch that movie and when you're in the in the mix of watching the movie, like at that point you truly feel defeated. You're like, are we even going to win by the end of this movie? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel you on that. One. But I, also, I can see why they did it because it's sort of like that same thing of like watching Tony Stark go. Like, it, but unfortunately, we saw it very quickly between these two movies. It's like, yo, you have to see the new next phase of Wakanda. And so, yeah. like, people that's going to be led into that, it couldn't be led by Angela Bassett anymore. True. And so it was just like, yo, that that regime, that dynasty had to fold and go and then be able to leave, like, you know, Shuri's character, be able to find out what's next for her. Yeah. Um, but that leads us into our next uh, segment of this show. My entire family is gone. <laughs> I am the queen of the most powerful country in the world. <laughs> I cried again on that line right there. Oh, man. You felt the, the emotion. Yeah. yeah. Have I I I'm sorry. She was just sitting like this. She's, uh, what's her name? Uh, Akoya was like, let me go back out there and uh, see if I can get her back. She was like this. You are stripped from your powers. <laughs> hey, she was done at that moment. At that moment, she was like, I don't care what you say right now. My daughter is gone. So, like, <laughs> you know, I love how everybody else though, on the side was kind of sitting there like, oh, oh, she didn't get that memo. We got up. Oh, <laughs> does she not know what's about to happen? Right, right. Because it said it on the email. You will be stripped. The itinerary, like the whole the reason we're here. Saying, like we like, all oh. here for your stripping of your pot. Like, like. Didn't, we didn't know she. They didn't tell you. Oh, my fault. Hey, yeah. Hey, that's wild. Imagine if you get fired from your job, and when you walk in, it's everybody at the job, but you don't know, and you're like, "Hey, so what we getting in today?" And they like. Ah. The funny thing is, she was in Chicago, right? Was in New York. Oh, uh, uh, Chicago. Wait, where is MIT? Boston. Yeah. yeah. So she had to get back. So she was like, hey, Queen, Queen Mother, um, they took Shuri, they took um, uh, Riri. I'm on my way back to kind of uh, get some more people to help us out. They was like, help us out? <laughs> when she get here, whip her ass. <laughs> you know, the door of Elijah looking like, yo, they, you know she told us to jump you once you step off that boat. Like, <laughs> like imagine the rumblings at the at the lunch table. Like, oh, did you hear what she did? <laughs> did you did you hear what happened? Did like, you, man, she, she had to ride all the way home like this. <laughs> they gonna kick my ass. I, yo, I gotta come over the, I got come over the plan. She ran home like, oh, what can I say? <laughs> oh, I can say they jumped me. Ooh, they poisoned me. <laughs> Hey, you know what's fucked up though? You can she's sitting there in her head, like, look, ain't can't nobody get mad at me. That's some water, water-like figure beings. <laughs> she came and jumped me. Yeah. Okay. Look, all, not only that, I killed like three of them and they came back to life. And they, they got, got up. They got so, first, 
they can't blame yeah. that on me. <laughs> See, that's why that's that's why there ain't you can tell that's what the American part missing. Because I'd have for sure clap back at the queen. Wait a minute now. Now I stabbed all three of these people. <laughs> okay. I'm talking about they supposed to be dead, like they supposed to be taking naps, and they got back up. So do I not get no credit for that? I got hit with a water bomb. Off a bridge. Yeah, I don't even know how I'm still here. <laughs> There's so much you can say. You like they yeah. rode up on wells. How was I yeah. supposed to? Who plans for wells? Who plans for wells? <laughs> if any of y'all can jump off of a well onto a bridge and it's like it ain't nothing, then y'all come up here today now and I resign. I throw my yeah. skill right now. I can imagine her being like Dion's in Washington, Jake. Get out of all here. you motherfuckers. Oh, why? <laughs> None of y'all gonna side with me. Drake! What's the, what's the <laughs> other one? Y'all gonna do this to me? Akoye! Then y'all gonna let them do this to Akoye! <laughs> <laughs> you gonna do this to the bald demon head of Serpy? Me? <laughs> I can swim fast. <laughs> Namor ain't got shit on me! <laughs> Y'all know what it is? River Tribe Program. All of y'all. <laughs> All y'all going to the dock. Backstroke. <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. All right, y'all. Now, let's get into our next segment, man, okay? This is something I'm introducing uh, to you, Dion. Uh, Deuce is a little bit familiar with this, and it is called Phantom Fiction. Phantom Ooh. Fiction, in my head, is like the lab that we go into, and we create fixed things that have been made, that we can improve things people haven't heard of, ideas that we just like to bounce around and just make into something. So hopefully one day... One of these big people come take it, and we got the proof, and we can sue shit out of them, or then make them hire us to go work for them. Right. That's it. And this one is no different. So I want to know from y'all. We're talking about Wakanda forever. So uh, there was there had been talks that there were going there was going to be a Wakanda series yes. that was going to happen. So I want to know we what we're going to do in this fan of fiction segment is I want to know what kind of series would make what would be the best Wakanda type series based off of these are the uh, questions we'll go off of what time should it be in it what time should it be set should it be a present day should it be in the future should it be in the past um who should the series focus on or or what should the series focus on also appreciate appreciate that also who uh will this tie into the MCU or will this be something that's kind of like a standalone within the Marvel universe? And who would you like to see as a cameo or a reveal in this series? Mm-hmm. Oh, so these are right. the- I'm I'm ready. All right. <laughs> okay. So let's start with the first one. I just want to get y'all opinion and then we'll try to decide which one is the best one out of them. Um, what time period? would you want to see this Wakanda series take place? So for me, with the choice that I'm picking, I would like to see there's two options. I would really like to see a prequel prior beat before the events of Black Panther, but we can do in between movies as well for what the idea that I have. Okay. Okay. So what time set are you going in again? I'm going uh, prequel before the events of Black Panther. Okay. For the first one. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. Dion, what about you? I would love to see where uh, the asteroid comes in. Ooh. Um, so you want to see the uh, first Black Panther? Yeah. Let's see how it all came about. How were they? How did they treat it? How did they act? Um, how did they build the whole city? Like uh, you know the <clears throat> you know the tribes. You know how they kind of came about. Um, that's Bashinga, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to see that, man. I, but the only problem is it won't connect to anything to the uh, the, the Marvel universe unless you know Bashinga comes back to help somebody in the third Black Panther or something like that. Uh, it technically but, can. I, got, I mean, I, I, I we'll get into that. I got I got yeah. ideas for yours on how we can connect. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm kind of in that same boat, leaning towards Dion. Something in the past. Um, I'm a little bit forward though, so I want to be there after the comet hits, and we already got like that first Black Panther there. 
okay. because I want to see like how they come to um, all these tribes to get used to that. And because again, like all of these people were equal till this happened. And then that's what kind of made them come together. And then the Jabari split. So I want to see like where we are right then at that time when we got this new Black Panther turmoil is a little bit high and you got some more drama to it and stuff like yeah. that. So um, <laughs> I'm, I'm between I'm between that time. So so, um, so let me ask you this: When did the Black Panther in the comic books? When did it actually land? Like was it during the time of uh, like when white people was colonizing? Co- colonizing. Joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, colonizing. Was it that? Uh, I'm time? not 100% sure. That would be fucked up. They didn't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they oh, didn't yeah. do I'm not 100% sure because, like, um, well, in the in the in the cinematic one, it's 10,000 years ago. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, they still they still jack they still ask for seeing their fellow uh, c- uh, countrymen. Being enslaved, they like, hey, that's nothing to do with us. They ain't go, they ain't go all the way into the Wakanda, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, but, but I think the same but, thing can be said about like protecting your own when it come to that. Like, it's just like too, it's the land. It's like it's not just about the people too. So it's like, yeah. yo, right. they wanted the land and they couldn't take them from that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then during that time, if we think about the superheroes in general, I think the only ones that would have been active would have been the Eternals. Yeah. 10,000 yeah. years ago, it yeah. would have had to be the Eternals. Yeah. Eternals would have been there. And I think that too, I think that's the, I think something that uh, Douchey may have pressed on. So I'm just going to throw that out there. I think that's what can help that tie into the DCU. A DCU. Uh, mm-hmm. Can tie into the MCU is because it can backtrack to cameos like that, like the Eternals yeah. or who else was there during that time that may lead to some stuff. Cause it's like, what if there's an already thing that's kind of like Hydra? Because we don't know what Red Skull right. got Hydra from. Like right. no offense to him. He he don't look that bright to have started that. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I feel like he had a book or a reference or something yeah. around that time. And then too, like who's to tell what mutants were there during that time? True. And I was gonna what I was actually gonna lean into was the ancestral planes, like the like getting into that ancestral planes about mm-hmm. what it is, the creation of it, when people mm-hmm. learn about it, how to tap into it. Like that's a way it can tie into the mm-hmm. uh the MCU as well. Even uh the Moon Knights, because yep. around that time we still had uh, we still had those avatars that were being oh, yeah, you're right. So we could also jump into that type of stuff of like actually seeing these gods. Because it looks like from from watching Moon Knight and watching a lot of these other stuff, even like with Wakanda Forever, it's like the gods themselves have these avatars. Like Namor is like the Feathered Serpent God's avatar, and he's drawing his power from him. So Mm -hmm. it's like even seeing them interact with these people, like we saw Moon Knight. Oh, yeah. We also forget about the Ten Rings and, and that whole oh. scenario. Yeah, so there was a whole lot. So because like, but mine would, would be a little bit further up because I would love to see the rise of Mbaku. Ooh, ooh, that, that would that would that's what yeah that's what that would be what the series that I would like to see. I can see that. I can see that. Okay, so okay, so we 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 are split between. Semi semi future uh pre- semi uh pr- present with back in the past, and I think we could create two of those. True, but if, if, if for the game purposes, you're uh, um where you're and De- where you and Dion is landing, I'm definitely willing to flesh that out more. Okay, right. okay, so we, we we're gonna go ahead and go with the time frame of in in the past, like ten thousand years yeah. ago. We're between the time of when the meteor hit and a little bit after when the meteor hit. Mm-hmm. So we dwell into that time. Okay. So who do you think the story should focus on, or what should it focus on? Should it be particularly onto one person, like how it was with T'Challa, or should it be kind of about an ensemble mm-hmm. cast, like Wakanda yeah. Fair? I think all the tribes, um, yeah. they I think they should have the same tradition of mm-hmm. like who's gonna be king of Wakanda, and then you know, it just just the breakup of the five is it five of them. I believe so. The the river the river tribe, the the red one with the dreads, the one Okoye is from, um, the, the Jabari. Five. Yeah, there's five. Yeah, and then um, and then the people that uh Shuri and them are with. 
Yep, the river, the river tribe, the mining tribe, the merchant tribe, the border tribe, and the Jabari tribe, or the yeah. it's just the mountain tribe. Yeah, I think the five of them. Well, the first episode should just be about the <clears throat> the 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 division of the five, but also working together. Some sort of mediated person that kind of be like, we did not build this up. Blah blah blah. Then there's always a stubborn person that was like, you know what? We're better than them. It's showing like the 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 friction between all the tribes. Yeah. And then right when the episode ends, you see that meteor coming down. And then it just like, you know, really calls division, <clears throat> but also unity of like, what is this? We are we're blessed. Like something mm -hmm. happened for them to be like to receive this sort of blessing, but also um, you know, should we keep it? Should we share it with the world? Should you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't even mind that as a season finale, though. Wow. Like, so he, he, yeah, because yeah, yeah, even now he talked about, cool, like, yeah. we also now like some Game of Thrones type stuff. Ooh. So it's like we're seeing these different tribes, what they bring, how they act, and how they respond to stuff. And then right at the end, it's like, that's your big bad, this meteor. Right? Yeah, because yeah. you know what? In season two, because knowing that the Jabari tribe doesn't subscribe to the Black Panther rulings, like they're mm -hmm. the only tribe that are really because they follow the white gorilla, you yeah. know. So now season two is the Black Panther, the first Black Panther trying to establish the rule, the lay of the land. But then that that division between the mm -hmm. all the four tribes and the Jabari tribe, who still has not, you know, uh, uh, come accustomed to the new ruling of the land. Yeah, I like that a lot. That's yeah. false <laughs> after this, <y> <laughs> and then that could be season three where it's the battle between the Jabaris and them. Yeah, now you see that you see them big fights because it's like now we retreat into the mountains. Yeah, and it's like yo, we don't want to be a part of this. Like we get it, we see what y'all trying to do. We just don't, we just don't mess with it. We out. Oh, this is good. Ooh. Now we can show them like we building up, we're building up Wakanda. We show them the resources of what it is mm -hmm. and how valuable it is. Should we go mm -hmm. out? We should have them like an early Killmonger person that's kind of like, man, we gotta get this. We can sell this. We can make so much money. Like let's 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 figure out how to. Keep this to us, yeah. You know, that's, that's and to, hear the, to hear the slavery that's happening, whoo! Of like, yeah. should we help? Should we help? Like, that's yeah. not our fight. That's not yeah. our fight. Yeah. yeah, that's a great story, man. Yes, that is. is. Oh my yes, god, that is. is that is a really <laughs> amazing story because, like, even when you wrap up the whole series, I mean, eventually we see that the Jabari tribe does work with the four tribes. See that they still don't conform to the traditional like rulings of the black panther but they still is wakanda forever so mm -hmm. the whole series finale when we finally wrap it up is that is that that whatever deal is like look we are still going to be in these mountains however mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying when y'all need us we here you know like yeah and then don't forget don't forget too based off of the comic book <clears throat> if that's what they want to throw in there too, you can lead into a season four, season five before we get to that part because that meteor is supposed to have come from the Chibari tribe. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, I mean, the uh, Shatari. I'm sorry. Shatari, the Shatari. Yeah. And so one of them seasons could be they actually come down to try to take that stuff back from them. And now you got this battle between mm -hmm. Wakanda and the Chitari. Ooh, wow. and, then, and then foresighting Wakanda forever, you could have wherever the other meteor fell at the same time. Because remember, the whole reason that Vibranium is in both um, with, uh, you know, the Talons and, and Wakandians is because the meteor didn't just land in one place. You know, yeah. there's, there's Vibranium everywhere. So, like, you don't even have to go deep into that. That can be one of those those Easter egg moments. Like, oh, snap. Oh, there go the other one. Like, oh. Yeah. Like, yep. And then yeah. now, so that <clears throat> can also lead now into... The next question, which is, um, how will we tie this into the MCU? And I think you gave a good string on that as well, is these different places, these meteorites landed. And so the fact that we did have one land in the ocean, we have one land here. What's not to say that doesn't connect them? Because if we're going like, what, 10,000 years, what does that put us? Um, is America established by then? No, right? Wow. I don't know how how old is America. <laughs> no, I don't think we. I don't think. I don't think. No, I don't no, think we. I don't think we in tens of thousands. <laughs> no, no, no. Two hundred and forty-six years ago was seems like when. Uh, well, no, that's the July Fourth. Hold on, I have no clue how long. 
I guess so. Yeah. It, yeah. Either way. Either way. Either way. It can. It can years. Yeah. We got a while. Yeah. yeah. But it can tie into like how you said the Eternals and all this other stuff that can help connect and establish why they don't want to mess with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, or why they decide that they don't want to be bothered with them and stuff like that um, because of what they're seeing and everything. And then you can even go back to like tying it in with history and stuff like that uh, to where it's like, like when China like started discovering like all of that stuff, like we can dive into those cultures and everything. So like how y'all said, like the 10 rings, uh, t- finding the 10 rings and all of that stuff like that, finding everything that needs to be found and whatnot. Um, all of that. I think that's another way that you can be able to tie it in the MCU of showing like from our celestial side to like the eternal side, you also have these pillars of history that was left because of them. And then even showing some of them like going with outside of Wakanda. So it's just like, yeah, we'll say the first ones going on these missions and stuff like that, like seeing them establish like their actual secret service and stuff, their government and everything like that. Like, I think that's gonna be a great way to help tie in there because they can teach some of them people. Like imagine them teaching espionage to Brit to the to the British in Europe. Like that. Ain't even um um how was how was the um the Russian dude formed? Remember um uh Rick, Black Panthers? Well, I'm sorry, uh, Black Widow's father. Oh um, like, I thought that was wasn't that the super soldier serum too as well? Yeah. Then, like an altered version of it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. How many altered versions do they have? A whole bunch because technically Bruce was uh oh a, wow a super soldier serum went wrong. Like there was a whole mm-hmm. there every once Captain America hit the once he hit, everybody was like, Oh, I want that, and everybody yeah. tried to make it. Yep. <laughs> uh same right. thing. Uh Red Skull, Red Skull took the serum. Yeah. Um <laughs> what it is, and they gave it to the black Captain America, and then now. Um, his grandson has it within his DNA, so that's yep. how he becomes Patriot. Mm-hmm. And so, but I think too, one of the things I noticed that with the serum, it always brought it always what they always kept tying it in was that serum brings out the person you are. Yeah. And so I don't think nothing was ever wrong with the serum. I think the the person that made the serum and how they worked on it perfected it. He just there was no way to calculate what it would do to the human ah, that it is sense. because each one of us is different. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. Because remember, remember um uh Captain America, he wasn't even a viable candidate. Remember, they, yeah. they didn't want him. They're like, fam, you know, you you this little scrawny dude, like fam, we ain't about to waste this serum on you. But then yep. he ended up being the best candidate. Yep, because he had heart. So the, yeah. the serum focused on his heart and gave him what he needed. I mean, same thing though with Red Guardian. He had pride for his country. And so yeah. that's what that focused on, which is strength and admiration and stuff like that. And even like for uh, Red Skull, you were psychotic. So it brought out the true psychotic of you. That is so, a wild ass side effect. That's one of those ones like, hey, do I get any compensation for this? Like, <laughs> I'm a red, I'm literally a red skull. Like <laughs> I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't got no nose, man. Like I ain't got no nose. I ain't got no nose, man. Like, like this can't be the, the, what I signed up for. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't ask to hop in. And why was he prepared to take off his face? He said, I am not who you thought I was. He said. He was he did he was rehearse that? that? He was at that point. That. At that point, yeah. he embraced it. He was in the mirror, like, oh, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna kill him. I'm I'm gonna have my regular face on. I'm gonna be like, ha ha. Like, <laughs> you already know before they did when Captain America rolled up, he was like, Oh yeah, this is so I can't wait. I'm gonna let him punch me. And then come off. Ooh, I'm telling bro, bro. I'm telling you, Zoloff, Zoloff, watch, watch. Yeah. It's gonna be epic. I'm gonna just peel that motherfucker off like. I see a lot of body shots, Steve. You want to hit my face by any chance? Right? <laughs> oh, it looks like you have fallen into my trap, Steve. Yeah. And then what was funny, it's like you know that nigga ain't shit because he struggled with it. He was... <laughs> hey, in those moments, I wonder, like, now you think about it, like, there, there'd be moments like where superheroes or villains, they got, like, sayings and words. Like, they never show them practicing it, like, ooh. Right, right. right. In, this moment, in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. I like, like oh, I'm a, I'm a hide in the back, but then when they when they say something about the dark, I'm gonna walk out like yeah. <laughs> Even when it comes to goons, they have to rehearse like the signals of like like 
That means yeah. break his legs. <laughs> yeah. You know? Or this means. You or know, do anybody ever? Tone. Do anybody ever have like a recap moment, like when, <laughs> like when Bane said, like you just you and you embrace the darkness. I was yeah, born yeah. from it. Like, do do we get back in the car? Like, hey, I snapped with that one, didn't I? Hey, <laughs> like, did you, bro, did you hear that nigga? That motherfucker say you really adopted the dog. I was born in it, <laughs> molded by. Did he pick that motherfucker up and broke his back and just just left from there? Lights came back up. Yo, me and Earl, me and Earl picked that dude, picked that little Batman dude up. We were like, "Yeah, you done, buddy. You is done." <laughs> what you got on your utility belt? I heard you got rats. <laughs> you be having all kind of gadgets. I wonder they be doing stuff like that. Which Batman was it when they tried to take his mask off and he had like a little booby trap? Oh, the Dark Knight with the Joker. <laughs> How do you have a booby trap on your mask, yo? How do your face not get burnt off? Like, who who thought about that? It was just like, yo. How do you not have scars right here from the, 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 the electricity? Right? I know that whole mask heated up and you just, so you good. You good. You all right? That's, that's it, huh? If this dude got knocked out. I am punching in your teeth, man. I am punching you. I am pissed. Oh, and then you, when you when you Bruce Wayne, I'm like, you the guy who's snagging to. So you must be Bruce Wayne. Yeah, I know you, Batman. You got that whole. Dog, you got like, this. You got this little red ring around you, just like wait, a little cow that be being warm. Do do y'all do y any of y'all watch the Harley Quinn show? Oh, I love that show, bro. It's so good. When 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 Joker found out that Bruce Wayne was Batman. I, his reaction was, he was like, Bruce Wayne. And then everybody was like, oh, my God. He's like, no, hold on, hold on. He was like, hey, I invested in one of your adventures. It ain't come out yet. Where's my car at, Bruce? Like, like Yo, you know what be some funny <laughs> shit? I know this. Everybody be so disappointed when they find out who Batman is in these series. Yeah. Every villain yeah. just be like, oh, what? Bruce Wayne? The billionaire? <laughs> You the one be causing me all these problems. Well, because it's because he's also in the public eye. So you're like, nigga, I see you every day, and I ain't put yeah. this together. Nah, nah, that ain't it. That ain't it. They they mad because it's like, y'all, this is white privilege. Like a motherfucker. No <laughs> wonder I can't beat you. Yeah. I'm fighting a billionaire. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder you could just be in the dark, just hiding right there. You got plenty of time. You rich. <laughs> I gotta teach these goons all these signals to just. <laughs> Meanwhile, you in here just got everybody building your gadgets and throwing stuff around. I'm so disappointed. I thought man. lavish ass parties and shit. Like, yeah. like I thought I you was one of cave. us. Like my, like I said, my you was one of us. in an abandoned acid warehouse. Like you are a billionaire. Why are you, you worried about a whole me? cave? A whole cave. Be like, I thought you was one of us, brother. Be like, man, my parents died. Oh, who gives a shit? You rich. I fell in the vat of fucking acid, and it was partially your fault. Be like, I ain't even gonna fight you no more. I'm gonna just sue you. That's it. That's how you beat I'm Batman. Tie your ass up in litigation. That's what I'm yeah. gonna Sue your ass. That's how you beat the Dark Knight. <laughs> That would be funny if they took some, they took all Bruce Wayne's money and now he 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 came spend money on his gas for his, his Batmobile. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I got I gotta go green. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, somebody give me some banana peels. I'm almost on E. <laughs> Let me charge up my little uh conveyor belt thing. Yo <laughs> imagine. Be like Batman, we need you. You gotta give me four hours. I ain't charged the Batmobile last night. What's up, man? I gotta, I gotta let it charge. Oh, shit. oh Batman Alfred, man. Running around. Anybody got a charger? Anybody got a charger? Yeah. Anybody got a charger? Anybody got a charger? Alfred Jazz was watching Sopranos last night and totally forgot to charge that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, oh my man. goodness, man! But that was a great fan of fiction. Um, I know we're still waiting on CT to see if he going to pop in here, but man, we're going to go ahead and jump into the main topic today, which is uh, the DC News. Now, uh, if you're a fan of Straight Out of a Comic Book, you already know um, we, we've been seeing DC take some real hits, man. Yeah. It's been, it been, 
it been treated like a domestic violence dispute, man. It just, it just, it ain't been no good signs of recovery until now. All right, James Gunn came out on uh, Twitter, Facebooks, live, all of that stuff to be able to announce that we have a lineup and a and a projection of what the new DC is going to look like. So first off, it's no longer being called the uh, well, we're calling it the DCU. I don't know if they call it the DCU, but I'm still going to call it the DCU. But they have their first title for this phase one of their movies which is called gods and monsters this is the god and monsters saga that they are starting off with and so um i know one big question you uh uh, uh, y'all both will have is we got several movies coming out this year and so what's gonna happen to them we got shazam we got the flash still coming out and look he must have heard it that's what it was he heard us talking about dc (laughs) <laughs> he was like, how dare y'all start talking about this? <laughs> you guys know I can't let you do this without me, man. How are you boys, man? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, CT is in the building, man. What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. Number one, Will Ferrell, you out of control, man. I looked at that email and I looked at that last name and I said, oh, this is a trip. That's number one. I, I want you to look at the email while we're talking. Nice setup, by the way, Will Ferrell. It's amazing. I want you to look at the email and I want you to look at all three of our names outside of yourself. I want you to see what you did, brother. You know how you did? You know how I know he didn't know the CT? Because he was like, yeah, he was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Clayton going to pop up later. And I was like, that's kind of weird. But now in my head, I was like, well, I oh, see Clayton English. Funny. I was like, yeah, I've been trying to get him on something for the longest. That's and I, told, wild. I said it. I said it. And to I, him. I didn't I said, catch I that part. Wow. You, and you I didn't catch that part. And so that's then later wild. on, he was like, CT going to be joining us. And I said, CT? I said, I could afford wow. that said Clayton English. I, I was like, all right, well, all right. First That's off, wild. First off, I'd like to apologize. Uh, secondly, this now lets me know I'm just going to write CT because I should have went my first instinct. I was like, wow. okay, I don't want to write just write CT and then he might not see it. <laughs> I was like, okay, so let me write Clayton instead and then wow. just put that so he know, like, okay, I know that you said you're going to be here 1230, so I just want to make sure you know ain't no confusion. You spelled it out, bro. You I spelled it out. out. And put it in bold. Man, it was bold. I I was feeling good until I saw the E. I said, oh, come on, man. Here's the funny thing. Uh, first of all, English, incredible dude, <clears throat> known for over a decade now. And uh, it happened once with the improv. Like, improv sent me a spot. And they were like, yeah, can't wait to see you. I was like, this is a lot of extra energy for a spot. And then um, I get an email like an hour later. Hey, oh, my gosh, we got you mixed up. I'm like, well, I'm still coming. So I don't know what, <laughs> what the mix up is. But yeah, yeah man. I've been knowing this bitch. Uh, so mainly, dude, what have I missed? What have y'all been talking about so far? Oh, um, so yeah, you just hopped in. So uh, we had our hot topic in our fan official segment. We were talking about Wakanda forever. And so you hopping in at just the right time because Perfect. we're just talking about the DC announcements from James Gunn introducing us to the God and Monster saga. And uh, we're just now talking, you know, just giving them a little information on what's to come with some of these uh, movies like Shazam, The Flash and stuff that's still coming in 2023. Yeah. Um those are still coming. We're still going to get to watch all of those. They are going to be released. Flash is still set to release this year as well. Mm-hmm. Um, quoted by James Gunn saying, one of the best super movie here, uh, superhero movies he's ever seen. Wow. That's what he said about The Flash. That must be why they hold on to him. Because they're like, like man. Like, gotta be. <laughs> I don't we'll know see. what he did in that movie. <laughs> but somehow, he can go, go have him a Robert Downey Jr. month, and they still going to stick with him. Are they keeping him as for his, his new universe? Um, So they said he uh said in an interview that, uh, you know, kind of gave like the uh, CEO type of kind of answer. They're still supporting his recovery. And mm-hmm. stuff like that. And so once that's done, they're going to see where they go from there and stuff like that. But they're not going to what James Gunn did say was he's not going to cast or uh, start casting folks out based off of just stuff that they, people have said or some stuff like that. Unless it's something truly like horrendous, like, yo, it's like, that's not my problem. So if, it's, you know, somebody say some off the wall stuff like, hey, man, homeless people need to get a job. It's like, hey, you still got to show up for work on Superman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sweet. So we we going to see. But um, those movies are still coming out. And then uh, a part of that is something that uh, James Gunn cleared up for us is he's splitting up the DC cinematics and all the DC stuff that's still coming out. So there's going to be a difference. There's going to be the DCU. And then there's going to be DC Elseworld. So 
all of these movies that we saw, like the Batman, the uh, Todd Phillips Joker series, the next Joker that's coming out, even to Peacemaker, these will not be a part of the DCU movies uh, universe, but they will be part of the Elseworld category. So some of these, like Peacemaker, can continue with the season two, or just like he announced, uh, Matt Reeves, the Batman, will be getting a part two, and it should be coming out, I believe, October 2025. So we are going to get another one of those. Here's the thing. So one, he didn't say Peacemaker. And because Peacemaker, Amanda Waller is getting her spinoff. So that's going to be in that same world with characters from Peacemaker popping in. However, I do feel that because we have Peacemaker and because the way that they doing, the way that he had done his, he'd already started his DC universe when he started Peacemaker. Well, realistically, Suicide Squad. So if you look at it from that point and you look at how they're having each character uh, when he announced the Batman Brave and a Bold. So he's doing yeah. Batman Brave and a Bold with Damian Wayne as Robin. And by the time Damian Wayne comes out, Nightwing already exists. Mm -hmm. So if Nightwing exists, then you know Red Hood exists. And if Red Hood exists, then you know that there are other people the Bat family is what he's building out. So the Bat family is being built out. Now, by the time that we see Amanda Waller, uh, the show, and Peacemaker, it's already now Suicide Squad makes sense because technically it's in a, in a more, you're dealing with the adult Bat family than you would have been a young Batman, which is why Matt Reeves is Batman doesn't make sense in this universe. And I'm extremely happy about that because now we finally get a Batman that is should have been Ben see, Affleck, but yeah. Yeah, it's a seasoned Batman is going to be really dope to get, but not yeah. two season. Like Ben not Affleck, season. Ben Affleck looks. Uh, they made him look older with the hair being gray, yeah. but he was still ripped, yoked, and young. So yeah. I don't know who they. The question now is, who could they cast that Ooh. isn't a no name that could be the new manly Batman? Yeah, you know I mean, I'm not asking y'all for the answer, but I'm just like, who could they cast? You know, Robert Patterson is 36. So, hey man, hey man. I'm, I'm not throwing him away. I'm not throwing him away, but you know, by the time we get but the there, look of of a grizzly Batman, he not, he ain't giving us that, bro. Hold on, that's not, hold my, on, that's not my Batman. That's hold on, Will. Hold on, this is hey, Dion, hey, yo, shut the fuck up, bro. All right, <laughs> you shut the fuck up. That's number one, man. That's not. I don't care if he's 36, bro. He He's 36, <laughs> but he can play between the ages of 18 and 22, okay? That's not a manly Batman, bro. He ain't got no muscle definition. He ain't trying to get no muscle definition. Ben Affleck pulled tires, bro, on camera. You know how many takes he had to do of pulling a tire? They had Robert Pattinson or Patterson, whatever the fuck the nigga. They had Robert pushing something up a fucking walkway, and he looked like he struggled. That's not my Batman. You can have him if you want. It's not my Batman. Bell He's definitely not my Batman. Bell. You said Christian Bale what? How do you feel about Christian Bale getting big? But Christian Bale did the work. No, here's the thing. As a soup, as a uh, as a comic book superhero fan, we always respect the actor more when they put the work in to look like the character. People even gave respect to The Rock for Black Adam because he was like, "Yo, I don't want the muscle suit." I'm going to work out even harder, so I'm filling it out, and I'm already filling it out. So when you see superhero uh, actors be like, yeah, I'm going to just uh, put the suit on. Like when you watch The Boys and you saw yeah. <laughs> and you saw Homelander without that suit, you're like, ah, oh, come on, man. Bro, man, watching man. watching the press junket of them on The Boys, I was like, hey, who is dude? Is yeah, he looks super small. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> also, shout out to that suit, though. Like, that suit definitely is doing some wonders. Why couldn't we have that for Shazam? Because that, that Shazam suit. Come on, man. You ain't want to hit the jump for your boy? <laughs> nah, he was like, yo, I just, I need a suit that got abs put in. Man, I, that's so I ridiculous. Did. Yeah, it, it is. So, um, we got I even talk about the video games. I want video games. I want a Superman video game. I want a Justice League video game and not kill the Justice League. I want story mode. Like we used to have uh DC Heroes. Yeah, oh, that yeah. was fire. That was the greatest team up Justice League game ever. And it was before Marvel Ultimate Alliance. So he said a lot about 
everything happened in the chapter one except video games. And I know he mentioned he wanted everything in video games to be matched up just like the rest of the universe. Yeah, so I think I think too that's just taking strategy with like gaming companies that they're gonna work with if they're gonna go with just one or if they're gonna maybe go with multiple people doing these mm. and stuff like that. So I know that's a whole different plate to have to worry about outside of just movies and television. And so mm. even him to be giving us like movies and television and so much stuff coming, I can only imagine that they're probably waiting till around like E three time when video games are really getting announced and stuff like that to give us that DC announcement for like different games coming out. That will be interesting. Yeah. But also so, it will have to be rushed. Like, and I'm talking about rushed in the sense of remember early 2000s when Batman Begins came out and then Batman Dark Knight and then Batman Dark Knight Rises, they were making video games that were like spot on to the movies. Yeah. And the Batman games were actually pretty good. But when you look at the other movies, like when Marvel Iron Man came out, the game was trash. So, but they had rushed it. My point in bringing that up is video game companies had rushed it to the point where they had made only worked on it for a couple of months and dropped it. So if he's going to make the announcement at E3, I don't know if a great game, because we're still getting Suicide Squad. I don't mm-hmm. know if a great game could be dropped in a year. Because well, we're and- talking... Not to cut you off, but it doesn't necessarily have to be dropped because they can do like how Marvel did. So Marvel introduced us to all these games that hadn't came out yet. Like because we're still waiting on the Wolverine game. Right. But they announced that we are getting one, even though it's two years out. So mm-hmm. it's it's nothing to really come up with a small little clip bit of the game that they're putting out just to announce, hey, we are we do have a Superman game in development and we're looking to drop it between 2025 and 2026. I like that. I like that a lot because we need a Superman game. We need a game for every member of the Justice League outside of just Batman, bro. Yeah, yeah we do. We do. We do need a whole lineup. Uh, but speaking of Superman, though, Superman is also getting his own movie, Superman Legacy. Finally. Um, James Gunn has said it's not an origin story. We're not starting off in Smallville. We're not starting off. We're not doing any of that. We're catching him as the Superman that's trying to find a way to balance his Kryptonian history and being this symbol of kindness on Earth as he starts to become this hero. Mm Mm-hmm. And like that, that was all, that was my main thing when they announced that they was rebooting everything and James Gunn was coming. I was saying I was like, if you're going to do Batman and Superman, don't do any origins because yeah. we done seen it so many times. So I was like, that was one of my biggest critiques and criteria that I was hoping that he didn't do. So I'm I was excited that he did that. Me and CT was talking. I was like, it's a bold choice to go with Damien. Oh, hey, there you go. Yeah, I was like, it's a bold choice to go with Damien. But I'm but I'm here for it because, like I said, Damien out of all the Robins is the most aggressive one. So that dynamic of Bruce, who he's aggressive, but he's the aggressor. He doesn't really like when other people is doing Bruce shit. So 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 he well you like, you, that, you gotta that, go that for dynamic. the best Robin. You gotta yeah. go for the best Robin. That's yeah. why. Like what you what you gonna do? To give us Dick Grayson again and watch them fall in the circus? No, don't nobody want to see that. I don't want to see don't that fall again. Don't nobody want to see <laughs> Tim Drake with that old dominatrix cape running around here with a stick. And don't nobody want to see. Well, I want to see what happened to Red Hood. I ain't gonna oh look. yeah, the Jason Todd. Yeah, that's I good. Love but you can Jason. see that now because Damien is around. By the time Damien come around, Jason Todd has already existed. Yeah. But here's the, the the thing that I love is when you just said this, Deuces. When you see the Robin, Damien is my second favorite Robin, but he's definitely up there. But yeah. the reason I love seeing Damien is because the dynamic between he, Bruce, and uh and Dick, because oh, yeah. it's like yo. Dick is low key my son, son, because this is the first one I raised. But yeah. you're my legitimate blood son, and that comes with a whole bunch of other stuff. And then you got the relationship between Dick and Damien, and that that we've seen in animated movies has been so oh, yeah. prolific. It's been oh, yes. so incredible that I would love to see that yeah. on screen. The problem is if you're introducing that because Titans is gone after this uh, this season. Yeah. So if you're going to introduce Batman Brave and the Bold in what, probably 2025? No, it's not going to be 2025. He didn't even give a year on that. He no, said he Superman's coming out in 2025. Yeah. So Batman's probably coming in 2026 or 2027. And if that's the case, you kind of have to show a mini introduction to Dick Grayson because he's going to be in the movie. Oh, yeah. 
So you got to show that intro, even if it's a quick showing the years of him raising him. But Damian Wayne, bro, now you're showing me Raz Al Ghul is still alive. I was you're just about me to say Talia. that. That's going to be fine. Woo! Woo! So we, yeah. So we're definitely getting that. the league of those back. Definitely. Definitely getting that back, yeah. Um, maybe even too like quarter hours because like by the time he comes, the quarter hours are seeking him too. So that means we might get a, t- a chance to see Talon uh, come to the stream and stuff. I don't know. And this is why I say I don't know. Luckily, the Batman chapter two isn't fully written out or in production <clears throat> before this announcement came. Because think about what you just said. We getting the assassins back. So if that's the case, Ooh, who's yeah. going to be the big bit? And you can't do Joker, realistically. Right. So if you're going to do that Batman chapter two movie, or part two, I'm sorry. If you're going to do Batman part two, you can't really show the quarter owls like everybody thought we were going to get on top of maybe having a Joker because the quarter owls should be specifically for the brave and the bold Batman. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, er, now the Matt Reeves dude has to, cause that would have been a perfect, let's merge him into this new DC universe. Yeah. But James is like, nah, what y'all did. Congrats. But I can't, that's not a part of this. I don't. I don't mind that because the, even the way Matt Reeves did it, it it took the simplicity of what a villain is mm-hmm. and and slowed it down for us with Batman. So now it's like I don't need to see several villains in his stuff. Like if you get if you like if the second one <clears throat> was solely focused on Penguin, mm-hmm. I still think that would be a fire part two movie with whatever Penguin is going to do. You ready for this? Yeah. And yeah. This, the only reason I'm jumping in so much because you know I love DC, bro. Oh yeah, bro. Did you notice this? We let's focus on what the not said was. The not said was the Penguin series. Yep. How yeah. at your boy? He never even mentioned that. He didn't mm-hmm. say no Else World shit for that. He said well, the TV shows we're getting are the Authority. We're getting well, no, that's gonna be a film. What's the animated joint? Uh, creature oh. Commandos. We're getting Creature Commandos. Amanda Waller and the Green Lantern. Those are going to be the series. Mm-hmm. And Everything Booster else. Gold. Yeah, and Booster Gold. He did not mention the Penguin, even in Elseworlds. Worlds. So that's not even a part of the plan anymore. I can see that. I can see that. That makes, If that everything's going to be matched up, why would I give Matt Reeves a spinoff? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Which is why I say, too, that can also now go into that. It can go into that movie, and we can kind of get uh, ahead of like what's going on and stuff like that. Because I, it wasn't like Penguin series was never necessary. Never I would have loved. Yeah, I would have still loved to see it. Don't get me wrong, but it's not something that you can't clear up within the first like it, within fifteen minutes yeah, yeah. within the film. And that's yeah. the thing. I never wanted to see, bro. I'm a DC fan, cuz mm-hmm. like when I look. And I see these characters are so dynamic, and you tell me you got Batman villains. First of all, I was starting to get annoyed with how many villains were, and I said this on this show before. I'm like, bro, I'm tired of seeing the villains get more love and spotlight than the heroes. This would be different if we had seen their hero counterparts have a show first. But Mm -hmm. you can't tell me, yeah. We gonna make a we gonna make another suicide squad, and we are gonna give a <laughs> penguin a spin off. Like, bro, Booster Gold still ain't got a show. This is before right. the announcement. Wait, wait, hold on, who you who you imitating when you say this? <laughs> <laughs> that voice is previous dumbass DC leadership. That's whose voice that was. That was the voice of the people. Was like, well, I mean, I. I don't think people want to see a Michael Keaton uh, back in the bat suit. Let's go ahead and scrap Supergirl. I mean, uh, Batgirl. Like, what are you doing? This is the entire reason so many people are coming back is because Michael Keaton is our Batman that we grew yes. up on. Yeah, yes. and he's willing to get back in the suit. It's like picture, um, what's my guy's name from Star Trek? Um, With Picard. No, the original dude, Captain Kirk. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Captain Kirk. Uh, William Shatner. William Shatner. That's as if William Shatner, we all saw Star Trek, the movie one with Chris Pine. Yeah. And we were like, yo, what if he made a cameo? And I yeah. didn't watch Star Trek like that. But when you get a chance to see 
someone that is so iconic for a role, you're like, I want to see them get back in the suit. And he wasn't willing to get back in the suit. So you got Michael Keaton 30 years later. It's like, yeah, you know what? I'll do it again. And then he not does it, and you dis disrespect him. Not only was he down to, to do it again, but he was like, yeah, I mean, how, how y'all want to go? Y'all want to do old man Batman? Like, he was open to whatever storyline fits for the fan base. Like, yeah. Wow. Not, not, <laughs> yeah, and not only that, he did it several times. It's like, okay, I put it on for, for Batwoman. Yeah. I, okay, y'all want to put it on for Flash? I put it on for Flash. Yeah. Uh, You need me to put it on another one? Hey, I'll put it on <laughs> for another one. I now, I feel like this. Because, and I'm, I'm going to wait to send this tweet. I'm going to probably send the tweet maybe tomorrow to James Gunn. <laughs> I say it because he be responding to people. I'm going to say do, this, man. <laughs> I'm going to say, James Gunn, with all due respect, now that there is a DC Elseworlds, drop that back, girl, bro. Yeah. yeah drop I mean, that back, girl, bro. Yeah. Because we got, we got Keaton. Let it be Elseworlds. We're not yeah. expecting that to be in the DCU story. Drop that back, girl, bro. Bro, what yeah, I'm worried all... about, Justin, what, what, what I'm worried about with, uh, with 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 Gun right now is I hope that he get his his due, like because I I think I think people because he had three hits pretty much, mm -hmm. and Warner Brothers was like, oh, we got a guy, we got a guy. I don't want him to be Justin Lin right now, like some Lin Sanity of like. You know, <laughs> he comes like well, Lynn Sanity. Well, no, well, hold on, let's hold on. We gotta give him more credit too, because we also got to count his Marvel side as well. Now, I think that's like, what he's talking about with his hits. Well, no, no, because right. you got Peacemaker, Suicide Squad. And no, 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 no. He's talking about before he got the deal with DC. Right. Oh, okay. So that it was like he's our guy. Yeah. He, he we we should get him, on his, but it's not like he had 15 years of hits. So it was like he had a small window of hits, and now it was like now he has to control a whole universe. Yeah. And I'm worried because people are so in love with the first. So they're going to keep on comparing no matter what. But so, it goes to what CT was exactly just saying. The, 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 the way to eliminate all that. You just established that there's Elseworld. Give the fans what we wanted so we can close that chapter mm -hmm. and say, all right, this is existing. This is here. I, we finished that out. But let's mm -hmm. get into now. Like I said, this whole new, because like I said, I've been telling I've been very vocal in telling people the way that you need to view these movies when people's like, oh, the Marvel movies is not matching the comic books. I'm like, well, yeah, but like just like if if CT did a whole Avengers run and then his run in, and then Will takes over and do his Avengers run, there's certain things that will be similar because they're canon, but mm -hmm. the whole overall story is going to be different. So I'm like, the MCU is Kevin Feige's run. So if James Gunn was like, let's finish out what the fans want, and now I'm going to get into my James Gunn run of these DC films, you are hitting both worlds. You are giving the fans what they want and leaving us open to say, okay, now let's see what James Gunn going to do. You ready for this? To Dion's point, bro, just to add on, I'm, I'm, I'm putting sugar on the grits right now. You just gave us the grits. Come I'm on, giving baby. you sugar right now. Sugar grits. Marvel's run. First of all, shout out to James Gunn. Good old JG. That's what I call him. <laughs> Good, old JG. Good old JG. JG came in at a perfect time because when he got released by Marvel, Marvel was riding high. You dig? They mm -hmm. couldn't miss, baby. And then DC is like, we need a winner. <laughs> let's, let's get JG. JG come through. Hit him with the whoop wop for the Suicide Squad too. We all was like, man, I ain't watching no bullshit Suicide Squad. The first one was trash. I'm not watching. This second one was amazing, right? Now they looking at this dude like he he might be on to something. We need to we need to holler at him, right? Yeah. Now what Marvel started to do, Marvel has had one too many ah, moments in the past two years, right? Mm -hmm. Three years actually. So. If this and this, I know it's I know it sucks to say this. If Jonathan Majors doesn't save them, this is the perfect time for James Gunn to come Ooh. through with another whoop wop and <laughs> snatch that fire. Because now I'm gonna tell you this is the whole thing. This is my opus. What James Gunn has done, James Gunn has done better than any DC head in history, and all he's done is what the fans have been asking for for the past 20 years. And you know what that is? He's 
communicated. I was just about to say that. Nobody <laughs> else in the history of DC Comics, when it comes to the film or television division, has ever communicated with us. Now, if, if producers and game creators, because Avengers just died uh, on PlayStation and Xbox and PC is, is done in March and then completely finished in September, but the only thing we've been asking for for three years is communication. Had it not been, God bless this, this data miner named Miller, had it not been for Miller giving us updates on what's coming and what's dropping and mm -hmm. news to come, we would not know anything. So when you're a television, a film company, whatever, your job is to communicate with the fans and we will give you grace. The problem with uh, the heads of DC before J uh, Saffron and James Gunn, they never spoke to us. They never let us know a plan. We had to read articles on what they thought the plan was. The mm -hmm. heads of DC had never said, hey, guys, this is our timeline, and this we're building towards something big, but this is the first chapter. He gave us that. Now we're like, all right, cool. You show me this. I've gotten excited about new characters. Of course, I see Batman and Superman, but I don't see um, you telling me, yeah, and we're going to give you another Aquaman and another – no, you're just telling me this is what the plan is stick with us yeah and you start a universe with superman i don't care who you build it even if you build justice league dark you better show me some goddamn superman <laughs> well, if you, well if you notice too though he is following suit like with marvel marvel did the same exact thing so it's like okay we have superman superman is iron man in the comparison of this then the next one is to around that batman thing and then like you have the authority the authority is the guardian of the galaxies version mm -hmm. of dc and then it's like, okay, I'm going to hit y'all with another one that you kind of like, um, not yet the big gun, but someone you can mess with, which would be Superwoman, uh, with Supergirl. And then the story they're going off of is not the little small one, but like the chaotic one, the one, the one that got stuck on the meteor and had to watch her whole family die. And, and that's the one I want to see. Ooh, so man. we get to see that Supergirl and then how then she comes to Earth. And so then it's like, yo, you're you're hitting us with this same formula of people to where I can see the big titans and you can introduce me to the, the cats I don't really know, someone I'm familiar with, and then a redemption of that with my favorite one that he announced, which is Swamp Thing. Exactly. That the show horror, went crazy. A horror movie. He turned this into a horror movie. And it's going to mm. end off the Gods and Monsters saga. I yeah. love that show. I was so mad. that I was mad that they canceled it before it premiered. Yeah, man. Damn. Bro, yeah. like it was canceled before the first episode came out. Mm -hmm. And if y'all go and watch that, it's on CW and I think it's on uh, HBO Max. It is such a good show for it's incredible. television. Yeah. Wow. But that's the leadership of former DC, bro. They never they only it was expensive. I don't I don't think you idiots know how television works. <laughs> former DC heads. Television works. The more people watch it, the more money you make. So how can you cancel it just because it cost you a lot of money beforehand? Do you think, <laughs> Do you? and this is real shit, do you think James Cameron wasn't shitting bullets when that first Avatar dropped? Man. This fucking movie cost Man. so much money. He, he dropped an article uh, a month ago, bro, when it came to Avatar 2, and he said, uh, if this movie... This movie has to make two billion dollars for it to start to make a profit. He mm -hmm. said this, yeah. and I remember reading that article like, Phew, "Hey man, you out of control." When you say it has to <laughs> make two billion before it starts making a profit, and let me tell you something, he made that two billion. Yes, he did. We so that on the last episode, yeah. That's what happens with budgets. You you overperform this budget, hoping that it it makes some money, and that's what you had to do with Swamp Thing, and it would have. But they yeah. killed it before it got the opportunity to. Yeah. It was so amazing. It was season one. They only had one season. season. one. Only one, one season. Damn it. One season. They got but, canceled before. Well, first. also, too, it was because of the shaky time that was happening. Because when it dropped, it was supposed to go at the time when they had the DC app. Yeah. And then the DC about app that. got shut down mm -hmm. and it moved to HBO Max. And so HBO Max wasn't releasing nothing just yet. So that's when they tried to go, okay, well, we're going to sell it to the CW to try to air it yeah. and stuff. For oh, us. And that was so up, stupid. Yeah. Yeah, it was because so, the so stuff stupid. in Swamp Thing, Swamp Thing is truly rated R. So it's like for you dropping it for the CW, you're editing out what makes it great. So oh, you're yeah. already making a whole fan base be like, oh, I don't want to watch this. Like you're, you're shooting yourself. 
Yeah. And what was crazy about Swamp Thing is right around the time when like real comic book heads really started like recognizing it, like, oh shit, I didn't even notice this was out. That's when they announced they canceled. And I was like, bro, it's picking up traction. Like y'all just killing it right now, and it's picking up traction literally right now. Yeah, like, it's kind of like the Batgirl of, thing. We didn't want to see no damn I Batgirl until Michael Keaton came on. We was like, oh, Michael Keaton in it? Mm-hmm. All right, well, I'll watch it if Keaton is in it. And then they're like, yeah, we're killing the whole thing. we like, ah, I feel bad for Michael Keaton. What about the girl? <laughs> I said what I said. I said what I said. <laughs> but yeah, Dion, if you ever get a chance, bro, check it out. I promise yeah, you, like, man. you'll enjoy it. Nah, <laughs> you'll enjoy it. Because it's like, you'll watch yeah. it. You'll be like, yo, why was this canceled? Like, there's no explanation outside of what uh, CT said was it was too expensive. I'm like, uh, first of all, you can get rid of the Flash. You can get rid of Star Girl. You can get rid of uh, Black Lightning. You can get rid of Titans Fall. I don't care. But you put another season in the swamp. <laughs> like, okay. I don't care who you got to go to. You better go to Netflix or something because they pay for everything. Wow. And they didn't do it, man. So it they, is it is a horror TV show? Yeah. Oh uh, well, yeah, yeah. It's a TV show. Um, it's it's supposed to be. It is scary, but it's not a spo- It's not categorized as a horror show. Wow. But this movie is uh, classified as a horror film, and it, that's wow. what this Swamp Thing is going to be. And it is too. It's very like a lot of people don't really know too much about Swamp Thing, but it's just like imagine, imagine nature having an avatar to really just tell you like, yo. You chopped down one more fucking tree. <laughs> I, Bro, used to, is- I, used to, I used to get uh, Swamp Thing mixed up with uh, the main character from Toxic Crusaders. Yeah, remember that show? You remember yeah. the Toxic Crusaders? Yes, I, I, Toxic I, think Crusaders. I, got, I think I got. I think I got that figure somewhere in my studio yeah. right now. In Toxic Mo- Crusaders. Most people don't know that was Michael J. White's first movie. What? Yeah, yeah you go. That. Yeah, you go watch the Toxic Avenger. That was his first movie. Bro, this is how this is how much I didn't know about Swamp Thing when I was watching the Harley Quinn show. And then they were talking about how, like how powerful Swamp Thing was. I had to look back into it because I was like, wait. And, and I, for, for whatever reason, I never put Swamp Thing and Poison Ivy together. And they got a whole history in the comic books. Like mm-hmm. they was a love interest. Like he yeah. is like the like the. If you talk about connected to the earth, Swamp Thing is that nigga that's connected yeah. to the earth. Like, and I'm like, damn, I didn't realize this aspect of it a lot. And I'm like, yo, that's what made the TV show even way better. After I started looking into more about Swamp Thing. I'm like, yo, Swamp Thing is a beast beast. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, bro. That dude is crazy. Intended. So that's why I'm like, I can't wait to see now with all of the updated CG, like what's going to happen, how what story they're going off of. And then the two, like that's another way to be able to introduce different characters from different uh comic book stories into that, like a Poison Ivy, to be able to connect you to a Batman and stuff until it drops. So I look forward to it. Another one I'm looking forward to is the uh Lantern Show. Oh, thank um, you, yo! Ooh. True Detective meets Green Lantern Corps, and it's going to be focusing on both Hal Jordan and John Stewart mm-hmm. working together. It's instead of the two lanterns nobody fucking knew about, it's like except a true comic book head. It's like, bro, everybody's favorite two lanterns are John Stewart and Hal Jordan. These are just the joints. Like they trickle down from there. I'm not taking away who your favorite is personally who's watching. I'm just telling you, these are the stars. These two, Hal Jordan was the first, and then John Stewart was the one that we grew up watching on Justice League, the animated series, and um Unlimited. So mm-hmm. what I and this is how stupid former leadership was, bro. They focused on their agenda getting green lanterns out and what the story was going to be. And they made the agenda more important in the story than making a great story, bro. And if you, you know, make a great story, people are with you a hundred percent. Yep. And I was going to say what's, what's messed up about it is Jessica Cruz is actually a dope ass green lantern, mm-hmm. but because it was so obvious what DC was doing, it's like, bro, yeah. y'all like, bro, y'all, y'all already messing up Jessica Cruz story because yep. it's obvious what y'all doing. Like, oh man. Yeah. So you, yeah, so, uh, you know, what would be cool. We, I think, I think we going to have Superman, but let's make Superman attracted to oranges like what is what the <laughs> fuck does his attraction have to do with this nigga saving the world just give us a story that's the problem with former dc leader i swear to you bro if i could run up and smack the shit out of former dc leadership in the face i'd take the opportunity bro i need i need i need a i need a i need a comedic uh video series of ct talking to dc 
old heads. <laughs> I'm so tired of it. Just because throwing out them ideas. <laughs> look at CW, bro. CW, oh, the CW man. shows started off and had promise, bro. And then agendas start taking over. And whatever agenda that is depends on whatever community they were focused on that week because several communities got served. He said that week. <laughs> I know we haven't chopped it up in a while, but CT, tell me you saw the uh the Batman that they, they that they are trying to give us in the um uh the Gotham oh, the, Knights. Oh, Gotham show. Knights. If you think bro that I am watching that bullshit, you are on that narcotic. I know I'm, I know you're not watching. I'm not why I'm just saying that that trailer when they said this was the Batman. I said, "Wait, is this just a nigga in a mask in a three piece suit? Like dude, that's dude. the Batman that got killed? Like, bro, dude, I, I was just... so pissed at that. I said, what the fuck?' <laughs> dude, you should you should done like me. That's when I decided, you know what? I'm gonna follow CT's logic and not watch trailers. <laughs> so, <laughs> Dog, my, Dion, my perspective ain't spoiled. Dion, mm -mm. in the Gotham Knights TV show in general, Batman is dead. He's done, and the the Bat family takes over." In the show, they showed the moment when Batman dies. The Batman that they have dressed up is in a three-piece black suit and a and a Zorro mask. And they said that's Batman that died. I said, y'all couldn't even get the cow. Like you're like, bro. <laughs> this this is a show. I mean, this really like, no, no, it's, I, it's this is the out. first one. It just came oh, out. Oh, this is the I'm last one. Up, I'm getting yeah. mixed up with uh the the the, the Alfred's one. Oh, Pennyworth? Oh, Pennyworth yeah. was No, Pennyworth, Pennyworth go hard. Pennyworth, Pennyworth, go hard. <laughs> Pennyworth go hard, bro. Yeah. You know, bro, you know where Pennyworth. you know where Pennyworth didn't go? <laughs> On that DCU slate. <laughs> Neither did that bullshit ass Gotham Knights. It None did. of that shit. I'm glad too. It's on the slate. JG knew what he was doing. He did. JG he ain't announced all nothing. Of it, even TV? Yes, TV, film, on. animated, and uh, gaming. So Flash, uh, Green, uh, Arrow. Flash is on his that? last season. Arrow been gone for uh, yeah. three years. Wow. Yeah, the only thing left Lord me is Lo Superman and Lois. Superman and Lois. Uh, they didn't mention it, but. It it's say. it's, it's teetering, though. It's teetering. I, I kept up with it. Season one was fire. Season two is. It's cool, but it's starting to kind of lose that edge. That it and has. that's what happens usually in seasons two and three for those CW yeah. shows. Here's mm -hmm. the problem, though. And realistically, shout out to all the actors involved, the Superman and Lois, and thank you guys for your effort and what you guys have brought to the table. Absolutely. However, as much as I love Tyler Heckler, you know that nigga ain't Superman, bro. That's number one. It's number two, Superman. it's not my Superman. You can't stand him. They stood him next to Tom Welling in the crossover, <laughs> and you had a straight face when you did it. That's when I didn't respect it. Number two, you can't say, as JG, that this story is crossing between television, film, animated, and video games, and have Superman and Lois existing in that and not calling it Elseworlds. Yeah, because he only oh. mentioned two things in Elseworlds, and that was the Joker movie, and that was the Batman movie. He never said anything else was Elseworlds. That was his. Oh, and he said, "Uh, Aquaman two. I don't think he said Aquaman two was Elseworlds, but he said oh, there was a it is. blue that that Blue Beetle. Yeah, Blue Beetle, and Aquaman, then, and what was the other one? Uh, Shazam. Shazam. But he said Shazam has always operated in his own little yeah. thing, mm -hmm. but that was him clearing up. This is Elseworlds. We're yeah. finishing out the previous chapter with all these movies, and now chapter one will begin. So he didn't say, he did say that we're not saying that older heroes won't resume playing themselves, mm -hmm. but those stories are over there. Yeah. Did you, you see the spice that he threw on about uh, Henry Cavill? Hold on, say what you say, Dion. What sucks about a child? We we we're adults that understand this happening. A child watching this is like, I'm so confused. Why is there so many Batmans? Why is this? So What's happening? There's a new Superman. Like I watched the TV show and I watched the movie. What is happening, Mom? Well, there's a thing called money. There's and a thing the called the money. Make, the movie doesn't make money. They have to be replaced. Hey, and as, a, and as a parent, I'm pissed because, like, didn't I just buy you a Batman toy? I gotta buy you another Batman. Another, no, this, completely this different. is a different Batman. This is this is year two Batman. Well, because you know, you know, you know the you know the bat symbol gonna be different. They always oh, yeah. 
they always do a different version of the bat yeah. signal. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but looking at it, Quinn look different than this Harley Quinn. Oh, well, that Harley Quinn is played by Gaga Kelly Cooper. Harley Quinn. Why is it this? That's Lady Gaga. <laughs> You know, I, I swear I keep thinking that's me. Lacoon is talking as, as Harley Quinn every time she speaks. I love right. Kayla Kilgore. She is she is dope. Here's the thing, though. So before we even address the Superman joint that you said, Deuces, the Batman thing as a kid that you have to address, when Michael Keaton was no longer Batman, I was like, what's going on? Because they never... <laughs> It, they never fucking communicated with us, bro. So we just were at the theater, like, uh, all right, right. We didn't. It's, it's up to a horrible one too. Like, who is this dude doing the blowfish lips every time you got Batman on? Just... Bro, because they definitely cast Val Kilmer just because of the mouth, bro. They had a similar mouth. Oh. Yeah, I was, I'll never forget. I was in the theater and I saw it, and I was like, "Ew, the loudest hell." Tell me. Ew. The funniest, they disrespected thing, us. the funniest thing about that movie is if you go back and if you watch um like Sills Kiss from a Rose video and you just see all the cutscenes of Val Kimmer <laughs> in Yo, between the, the face it, it, that he makes. It's it like, was what? that and just that light he always had. It was just yeah. <laughs> like yeah. where is light coming from when you Batman just and they the, never and communicated using the same mold as Val Kimmer. Oh, Jim Carrey that. definitely stole that mold. He stole that mold. <laughs> That was from Val Kilmer's face, and they they went back and forth and took it and put it on the That shit, they never communicated with us. We never knew what was going on. It took us to be maybe 25, 30 before we found out why Michael Keaton left. Yeah. So now, yeah. JG is already winning because yeah. he's communicated with us and let us know what's going on. And he's communicative on Twitter, which is talking to the people. Before, during the Justice League stuff, the only part, like, Snyder would kind of communicate when it came to Snyder's vision. However, pictures and stuff. It, yeah, pictures and stuff. Like, oh, stop being cryptic and open your fucking mouth. Tell us something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But James Gunn has communicated with us. He's let us know what's going on. He's cleared up any mistakes. Hey, I love that. I love that he he addresses like he like somebody be like oh I'm sources selling he be like hey that's cap fam like yeah like he just like, getting right to it <laughs> but you know it's funny I didn't realize how important a director was until I became like in my thirties so James Gunn is good as a writer and director together he ain't gonna be able to do all this entire universe mm -hmm. he ain't gonna Tyler Perry this shit it's gonna go it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna go awry somewhere. Because well, it, it may well, not go awry if based yeah, on yeah. the team he builds. The reason yeah. why Feige was so dope is that he built a team that was mm. able to listen to him and, and work out the vision. That's why James Gunn worked into it. Because so if James Gunn is a good leader, like we expect him to be, then he's going to build a good team that helps him flesh it out. There's he no if. He's already shown a good lead. True. Like, think about, True. shout out to Kevin Feige. Kevin Feige. <clears throat> had a John Favreau. John Favreau came in and completely, he made us care about Iron Man. And not only did he make us care about Iron Man, this is, this is the job of someone who can't do everything. If I say, yo, guys, I can't direct every movie. I can't write every movie. But this is the story that we're building toward. As long you can do whatever you want within these movies, as long as you hit these beats mm -hmm. and you get us here. Mm -hmm. Now, when you get people on the same page like that, you're going to win every time. The problem is once you start saying, uh, oh, shit. OK, cool. Oh, Dion. So you want to direct the Superman movie? All right, bet. Deuces, you want to direct the Flash movie? All right, cool. And then, Will, you want to direct uh, Wonder Woman? All right, bet. Cool. I'm going to do um, I'm going to do the authority. And we're all like, all right, bet. Let's do it. We'll meet back here in three years. <laughs> and we don't have a fucking story. We right. just throwing shit up against the wall. That's yeah. what DC had been before. Snyder had his Justice League and he had the heroes and he wanted to fight Darkseid. That's fine. But you never laid out a plan. Mm -hmm. You just said, yeah, we're going to do Batman versus Superman. And then uh, we're going to do a Wonder Woman movie and an Aquaman movie. And then we're going to do a Flash movie and a Cyborg movie. It's like, OK, this is great that everybody's going to get their own movie. But why are they getting their own movie? Right. Mm -hmm. Are they getting their own movie just because you want to show us the Justice League be strong? Or are you trying to literally put things in each movie that connects these? And none of those films did. 
The only thing that Batman versus Superman did was introduce Wonder Woman and kill Superman with Darks. I mean, uh, with Doomsday. And then when they did the Justice League movie, which was extremely premature, not the Snyder cut, the regular version. Yeah. Now you should. Well, you know what? Let's for shits and giggles. Let's talk about the Snyder cut. Snyder cut was also fire, but stupid because you're showing this big ass fight with Steppenwolf, and then you're gonna show Dark Side come in, and you introduce Martian Manhunter. Mm -hmm. But you don't have him doing anything. Right. That, I'm sorry. I, I, he was I'm there sorry, from man. Superman. He was there. Yeah. <laughs> the movie. The movie gives you blue balls. That's what yeah. it is. The movie. Let me ask you this though. Did did remember when when the Flash came into the TV? Bruce. It ain't blah blah blah. Did they ever connect? Yes, they connected yeah. into the uh when they did the the Snyder cut. So mm -hmm. the Snyder cut shows the true dream of what happens, which is if Superman loses Lois that's what like he becomes like this mm -hmm. whole dictator and he's killing everybody and now batman has to try and pull together some of the villains and a couple of the heroes who are left to try and take him out so yeah. it was very underwhelming it was dope but underwhelming very much so very much it was so. like this is the thing from <laughs> <laughs> this is this is this is what y'all kept telling people to release this was it and, and it was better than what it was but it was like come on man if this is your best shot I, I now understand why they didn't give you another one. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you didn't do anything. Like, listen, man. I, I really get passionate about this. I'm trying to calm down. <laughs> when you build a story, let's say, hey, man, you know what's dope, bro? Hey, Will Farrell, he got some size on him. Hey, Dion Lack got some size on him. We should do a movie where they're fighting. Uh, not yet. Let's do this. Let's do a movie with Will. Let's do a movie with Dion. And then the solution is a villain that they both will end up fighting. Let's throw a movie in the middle of both of their movies about deuces. Or let's do a movie about deuces first. So you do a movie about deuces first. You throw that on HBO Max because nobody know the character of deuces <laughs> yet and why he's important. Then you drop the movie with Will. Then you drop the movie with Dion, and then you call the next movie um, the Bat. I mean, uh, Dion versus Will. Now everybody's like, "Oh, we want to see Dion versus Will." And then right, right as they're tearing each other apart, they see Deuces come in from his motivation from the first movie, which is to steal the Earth's core or some shit like that. And now. The only two people who can fucking work together and stop him are Dion and Will. And then you show Dion and Will working together, and now they've formed a bond. And now, in the midst of that, you see other heroes that have come around to join into the fight to stop deuces. And now you got a fucking story. Yeah. As opposed to let's do let's do a Will versus Dion right now, and then you know we'll just put deuces in there too and just shoot on it. Like this is stupid. <laughs> yeah, they had no foreplay. They went right from Man of Steel to that. And I'm like, God, yeah. Man. How you do Man of Steel? <laughs> First of all, for you to say you're doing Batman versus Superman and you're going to do the origin story of a brand new Batman. <laughs> In Batman versus Super. First of all, I just met this nigga. That's number one. That's what I'm thinking. Right. I just met this man. And now you're going to tell me that he's about to fight the guy that I've known for a couple of years. Instead yeah. of you trying to just say, look, man, Christopher Nolan is a part of this. Nolan, get Christian Bale right. yeah. to come do this movie, please. Because you know he would have said yes. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's not, uh -oh. let's not, get, let's not get too hasty because... Uh... Let's not get that trash ass Batman in here. I, I like I like my Ben. I <laughs> love Ben Affleck, but I you like know, you know, if Dark Knight Rises was never to come to pass, you would have liked to see Christian Bale in Batman versus Superman. But then I saw Ben Affleck, <laughs> the real Batman. <laughs> I saw that. I didn't see where is I'm sorry. Where is, is I hated that three. voice. Where where is is you, so much. you a Batman. You and that's the problem with having right now. We're gonna keep comparing. This this DCU with what whatever James Gunn come up with. And that's no, wrong. that's not true. No, 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 that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. It it comes to like we'll do that with characters, but it's just for fun and giggles. Because it's like the same thing when Todd Phillips introduced the Joker. I didn't compare him to Heat because I know okay, Joaquin is going to make his own path mm -hmm. as Joker. I want to see that path. 
I'll have the comparisons there, but I'm not going to dictate, okay, this guy did a better job than this one because I know they're going to give us separate ones that are going to stand out. Batman is kind of hard to stand out because it's the same guy. It's not nothing really different. Like there's different variations of Joker. There's yeah, different ways is. that he came up and stuff like that. From the dude with the cut smile, from the one with the classic paint, there's so many variations you can play as him. Thomas, uh, Bruce Wayne is just that same person that saw his parents get shot and his true daddy turn him into a vigilante, mm-hmm. which is Alfred. Alfred is his true daddy, in case I yeah, didn't know. Really, <laughs> really, the, <laughs> only, the only thing that we really judge a Batman on, though, in general, is we we look for somebody who can balance bruce and batman right is like when we go because you know we often get like ah man that's a good ass bruce but they suck as batman or yo they are fire as batman but i don't see them as bruce so it's like a lot of the times the comparison comes from who was our most complete closest to both batman and bruce that we got and we comparing it to that which is michael keaton ben affleck the only reason i can't give ben and this is the only thing he's missing is a solo film and it's True. not his fault. He made True. more appearances as Batman than any other Batman. Like he made more appearances in other mm. people's movies and these cameos, but he never got the solo project. Yeah. And that's the only thing that held him back. Yeah. And it was Batman. building up. It was building up. Christian Bale yeah. was only existent. Christian Bale, the only Batman that you could compare Robert Pattinson to is Christian Bale because he's the only one that has a similar situation where he existed in his own world, right? Yeah. Michael Keaton no longer can be said about that because he appeared in this Batgirl thing and he's going to be in a Flash. So it's yeah. like that Batman is now canon to the DCU. But Ben Affleck... And Robert, I mean, um, Christian Bale and Robert Pattinson are in their own little island. That's the Project Batman. It's like, yeah. yo, this is just, he only exists in a world by himself as opposed to other heroes and villains mm-hmm. from other universes let being a part this, of it. Let me ask you this, CT. If they released the Bat, the Batgirl, even though it's a different world and it's trash, would you still be like, eh? Or would you be like, I should have kept it away? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know why I gotta I, I gotta be biased because it's Michael Keaton, bro. There are certain yeah. people that you give passes to, like yeah. you know, Lord rest her soul, Whitney Houston. You gave passes to Whitney Houston that last decade because you're like, hey man, I will always love you, Whitney. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So you give passes to your heroes, bro. And Michael yeah. Keaton is somebody that you I've watched Batman and Batman Returns both equally over 100 times. Yeah. I owned the Batman Michael Keaton toy. I watched Batman the animated series because of the influence from Michael Keaton. And that goes to show you when you look into different universes Batmans, as a child I understood that they kept television and film separate. So when I was looking at the TV show, the animated series Batman, I was like, "Oh, well, I guess they couldn't get Michael Keaton to do it because it would cost too much money. So they got to hire this guy. And then that guy became such an iconic Batman that we wanted to see him in live action. And we got Mm -hmm. the one chance to see it. And he was better than 80% of the other people who've ever put the cowl on. (sighs) Woo! That man. Yeah. He comes out with Kevin Conroy. Rest in peace. And I'm glad that he got a chance to do this. Is what happens, guys. When you have a true icon that loves the work that they're doing they'll do things like oh yeah i'll voice it i'll voice as kevin conroy i'll voice batman in another television show Mm -hmm. i'll voice him in another cartoon i'll do video games cool and this voice was the the running theme for the last 30 years Mm -hmm. right and then they're like hey man we're doing this big crossover event would you be bruce wayne oh i'd love it He's not like William Shatner. It's like, ah, yeah. not doing that no more. You know what I mean? Michael Keaton. Hey, yeah, I'll do it again. What? The reason Birdman rocked so hard is because it was very similar to Batman. <laughs> yeah, great movie. Yeah. And then even on, and then even on top of that, like Kevin Conroy, when he chose to come into the reality, he did it on an Avenger-like scale for television. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. was Crisis on Infinite Earth. Yeah. So it's like, yo, you came at the correct time. Mm-hmm. Anytime we need to see you, it was right then and there. And then mm-hmm. just like how it said and then how it was. And then for him to pass, it's like, yo, we actually got to see this voice 
come to life. But then not only that, it's like we've heard you for 30 years. So it's like to us, you are kind of that old man Batman based yeah. off yeah. of how long you've been talking. So it's just like and we know, already got to see him be old man Batman. Yeah, yes, he did. Batman Beyond yeah. 20 years ago. Yep. That's the legend, bro. So no, legend. when it comes to these actors, when it comes to people like, oh yeah, I don't know how long I'll play this character. Like, I don't want to hear that fuck shit, bro. You signed up to play this role. <laughs> I deserve to <laughs> see you play this role for the rest of your life. Now, mind you, you got people like Thor or Chris Hemsworth who was like, yo, I'll play Thor forever. Uh uh, Hugh Jackman, yeah, I play Wolverine forever. Even no matter what, I'm always gonna be known as Wolverine. For him to even come back in Deadpool to play Wolverine, knowing what he has to put his body through, mm -hmm. over 50 years old to do it yeah. for the fans for a job that changed his life, is what you have to be in these in these films and these televisions because it's more than about money. When you look at the Power Rangers 30 year anniversary, uh. Amy Joe Johnson, you out of control. You yeah, out of control. Man, this is really? 30 years, bro. Yeah, this is 30 really? years. Yeah. And Walter Emanuel Jones, the original Black Ranger, American, because I know people give <laughs> me the comments. Well, you know, the first one, shut the fuck up. I'm Power Rangers history around this bitch. You got Walter Emanuel Jones, original Black Ranger. You got David Yost, original Blue Ranger. Then you got Steve Cardenas, Johnny Young Bosch, Karen Ashley, still a part of season two. They weren't original, but they were the next original cast members mm -hmm. right. returning you got Catherine sutherland who didn't who came back who came in in season two as well after uh kimberly at kimberly after amy joe johnson left the show you got austin st john who made an appearance uh at least two years ago during the pandemic for dino something but we all love to just see that cameo then mm -hmm. you got a chance to have seen jason ever frank god rest his soul uh all the cameos that he had done you mean to tell me Amy Joe Johnson, they sent you an offer. <laughs> you said it wasn't enough. You sent, how about we do this? They don't respond, and that's just it for you. This is 30 years. You don't get another 30 year anniversary. As you saw, and I'm not going to guilt anybody, but I will say, as you saw, life is too short, man. One of the brothers that I just mentioned is no longer with us, and you couldn't come back for the thing that got you your start and got you so many mm. fans. Yeah. You couldn't come back for a 30 year anniversary. It's not about the money. I had this conversation what, what, with Walter. What, what, if, what if this is gonna be she's gonna be the killmonger? What if she might pop up? She ain't popped up. I Damn. said, yo, Walter, you, this dude. ain't about the money. This <gasps> is about the fans and the legacy. Mm -hmm. You're the only one who hasn't come back, you and David. And he was like, Man, you're right. And now he's back. I guarantee the money ain't make none of them rich, but this is for the fans. This is for what they put into yeah. this franchise. Go ahead, Will. No, but also too, just just to even piggyback with what you said to add to this, so you can continue. Yeah, you won't come back for this, but you'll reprise your role as a cameo in the Power Ranger movie that dropped. Oh, you and Jason David Frank. That's your last oh. one that you show. So you oh. you will come back, but you won't come oh. back will for your own. Oh. <laughs> That's real. You came back for power. You came back for power turbo, a Power Rangers movie where you played this quick cameo, but you can't come back for the 30 year anniversary on the flicks for the fans. The only reason she had came out to do conventions was because Jason David Frank convinced her. And I understand that this is what I will say with grace. There are um, it's a completely different world for women in these conventions oh, yeah. than it is for men. And I, I can only imagine how some of these weirdos make women feel. That's not my complaint. My complaint is you were a hero to me as a little boy and to not see the original pink Ranger hurts because it's not about the money. It's about what the fans it's about the fans. And that's yeah. what it's always about, man. Yeah. All I know is this. If she do a Suzy Q reboot, I'm going to be pissed. Oh, if she do a Suzy Q reboot, I'm lighting the city on fire. <laughs> I think they might come back, man. I, I think I think they might do like a little something, <clears throat> like a quick cameo, just kind of, you know, like, like a like a Patrick Stewart when he kind of popped up. Something something like that, like, because there's In no Star Trek too. It's But it's, it, Dion, what you're missing, though, it, it's not the property. They The property wants her back. It's yeah. all on her. Wow. 
And then the cameo oh, still it. just don't do it yeah. just as like, yeah. yo, you're it's, the it's original Pink Ranger. Yeah. Like, yo, like you can't, you like all these folks came back. Like, it's just like, yo, like, what are you doing? Besides you know, Trinity. You also, besides Trinity. Well, I was going to say, you, the rest yeah, of them who passed, passed away. away. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah, they all, have they ever had any, the, the four of them, they, have they ever had like a reunion? No, oh. no, this, no, this would have been it where all the, all the originals would have came back. Yeah. Outside of uh the original Jason, and then too, like correct me if I'm wrong, CT, because I saw something and I, I don't think it's true, and I may have read that wrong. Did Trini have a daughter and like her daughter's a Power Ranger now? I don't know how they're gonna do it in reunion, but the young lady is playing her daughter. Oh, okay, got you. Got that's what yeah, I, she's not her actual mean. daughter, okay. but yeah, she died in a, uh I don't want, but yeah, she um yeah. so that's gonna be interesting to see how they play that. But my thing is Amy Jo Johnson has only come back to certain things because of Jason David Frank, even though her and David Yost are extremely close. So yeah. I think it's, it's a missed opportunity. Even with the Power Rangers movie premiere, there's a picture. There's even a picture with Jason David Frank and Austin St. John, David Yost, and Walter Emanuel Jones, and Amy Jo Johnson is not in the picture. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think she came to the premiere later or whatever, but it's like, it's not that picture. So it's like, bro... Do you like? Do you not think about these things, or do you not care that these, like for me, Power Rangers was life changing, man? But also, too, we got to remember that can be a stigma for folks and stuff like that. Too. When you're I, fifty, I, yeah, I'm not, I think about it though. Like even now to this day, I doubt Jalil White don't cringe a little when someone goes a line from like Steve Urkel. Oh, like I don't know. Or just, or just, yeah, so it's still, it. yeah, so it's still that stigma that it's just like some people may not be able to handle that. Because think about it, like, can you name something else she's been in? Yeah, we talk about what? Susie Q. We could talk about Flashpoint. Uh, it was a show that she had done on yeah. like Fox or something. So she's had a storied career out of every one of the Power Rangers, to be honest. Her and Walter have the most credits outside of Power Rangers. Because yeah. Walter went on to do the shield. He had mm -hmm. space. Well, I'm sorry. In order, he had space cases. He had another show in between space cases and the shield. And he had done a couple of sitcoms. Like Walter has done it all. Then you look at uh, Karen Ashley, who also had her credit game up, killing stuff. And then you look at Amy Jo Johnson, who Felicity, Flashpoint, Susie Q, uh, she started directing. Like she's, if anything, she's moved past it so much. That's why you could come back and be celebrated as what you did and what you helped build. But you know, to some people, man, it's just not yeah. important to them, and that's so unfortunate. Well, well I was I gonna say to CT, uh, sure, uh, yeah, I gotta get about it soon too. But I was gonna say yeah. to CT's point, and and to your point is too, Will. Like, yeah, it could be like there could be something that's to it. But to CT's point, benchmark moments is the moments where you say, you know what? All right, normally. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm that chapter of my life is closed, but yeah. I recognize that this is a benchmark moment in history. And mm -hmm. so I'm, you know, I'm going to suck it up for, like I said, what, filming a, a TV show for, or that special, let's say two weeks max that they, she had to spend on film. Two weeks out of your life just to make history one more time for the people who loved you and loved this property. Like, like that, that's a sacrifice that, you know, said at some Bro. point, like, you, I give you know, an example. There's there are two things. There are a few things for my own personal creations, but I was on a show called Family Time. We did eight seasons in total. Played a character named Donnie. For the rest of my life, that role, there are gonna be people, hey, hey, you Donnie from the deck. All of that. <laughs> I would gladly say something from the show or do another show or another season or reunion special, whatever. Then you got the sketches. The I know y'all fucking or Sebastian the Assassin or whatever the yeah. fuck catchphrase of anything that I've done, I would do that until the day that I die. If people are like, yo, we want to see it, you want to see it, I'll keep making it because <laughs> that those kind of things help put me on the map. So it's not so much as running away from it, it's more so, yo, do I want to do this? No. But is this going to make people happy and I'm getting a chance to do an anniversary of it? Then done. I'm doing it. Yeah. I, but, but then too, to, to your point, though, CT, even with that, 
that that didn't define your career. Right. You know, like, like we, and again, too, mm-hmm. like you enjoy doing that. You felt blessed to be able to do that. Even yeah. too, even more blessed that if people get inspired by it to go like, yo, bro, you you made me laugh. Even if I've seen only one episode, I bust out laughing when you yeah. came on. Yeah. It's like you find that power into that to where it allows you to keep going. For a lot of these, like a lot of people I've seen, like even like in some of these conventions that just don't seem happy that they played this role and At it's all. just like it's just like yo like do you like you don't realize like how iconic of a person yeah. you are and stuff like that it's like you don't know I, I get demons that you've had to fight in the past and stuff like that but it's like that character didn't fight them demons and characters don't have them demons so True. that can be your glory from all of that like even when i met the dude that played flash gordon he's so nice He's just like how you see in Ted. It's like, yo, like he does not mind putting that suit on coming back out there because right. it was so iconic for him. It's just like, yo, when you see this, somebody's going to light up. Yeah. Someone's going to light mm-hmm. up. Someone's going to want pictures. Somebody's going to have me fan fiction. Someone's going to have something for me. So it's just like how you said for Amy Joe to like not put that into question with her and thinking of this role. It's just like, you're the pink ranger. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the last like, thing, the last thing that I would say in general with that, because like I think then you vocalize it, right? So, like, and I, I'm I'm gonna speak for me. I don't know if CT felt the same way, but when I saw David Yost's name on it, knowing yeah. how vocal he was about his time on it, I was legit surprised. When I first heard that they was doing the reunion, I was like, all right, we know David Yost. So I'm already okay with him not being there because. He has vocalized his trauma, what he's dealt with and everything, right? So him sucking it up and being, I was like, yo, what? Like, that's crazy, right? Amy, yo, she hasn't said any contentions of being there, right? So it's like, you you, you messing with our emotions because we're like, okay, we're like, we, it's almost, in, and you said that there's a reunion with the original cast. We we expected her to be there. Oh, yeah, we, we know you're going to be there. You never had no issues with it. Bro. So it's like, that's the issue is like, you leaving it way up in the air and then only to tell us last minute, you know, only to tell us last minute that you ain't with it. Like that's, like, like I said, I, 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 if, if you if you got contentions with it, be vocal so that way we can at least know. Like, ah, this is my thing, bro. I and I don't want to trash this young lady. This is just because she's still a hero, childhood mm-hmm. hero of mine. What I will say is, David Yost, at a time at a very dark point in his life dealing with his sexuality was teased bullied and made to feel worthless and this man was able to find a light this man was able to overcome he was able to find joy and love within himself and to still go back to to uh, to something that is associated with a very dark point in your life Mm-hmm. I thank you. I appreciate you, David Yost. And I'm grateful for every Ranger that is coming back for the special. Yes. And for the Rangers that might have been uh offered an opportunity to come back and haven't, shame, yo. Because yeah. yo, man, these you know what I get a lot. I get a lot of these, and I never want to stop getting them, but I get a lot of messages differently from people sometimes i get a chance to meet people in person and people tell me um what some of my content has meant to them or a video that you know helped them get through a time whatever the case may be and every time i've heard it i needed to hear it i was at a point in my life where i was at a point in time where i'm like i needed this and for power rangers not only was it it's so easy to say oh that was my childhood but to to elaborate much like the DC universe and DC content, these things helped me escape, right? Yeah. My childhood probably had some extremely dark moments that I've repressed, you know, being a kid and, you know, you get bullied or you don't feel like you fit in. And then you have these properties, these, uh, these science fictional properties that allow you to escape and be somewhere else or be somebody else. And, the nostalgia of revisiting that you owe it not only to yourself for what you contributed, but to the people that supported you and support you to the day, because as a child, 
they always tell you if you get child fans, you got fans for life. Thanks. Because people, yeah. to, now I'm still talking about Michael Keaton. I'm 36. I started watching this dude when I was four. Yeah. You did? <laughs> yeah. So it's like this you get fans that are kids and you'll have fans for life. And I just hope people don't uh, undervalue or underappreciate that. Yeah. yeah. And then especially for something like, and just to, to, to end, it, end it off on that before we get ready to close, mm-hmm. not everybody gets a chance to be blessed with something that has continued oh, yeah. since then, because Amy could have been a part of Beetleborgs. Woo! And we see what happened to that. Hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> you're a part of a whole of a series. Three that typical has... average kids in Florida. Yes. Yeah, but you're part of a whole series that is still from the 90s when we were children, that's still going on to this day that's impacting children now. It's like, mm-hmm. yo, you're a part of that legacy. Like the, the and, it, and it is disappointing to be able to like have to miss out on someone like a C like 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 a CT of if he had children at this time, that's yeah. also a Power Rangers fan. I get to introduce you to the ones I saw as a kid yeah. and maybe even interact with yours. Oh, And you're depriving us of that. Mm-hmm. And you're not even giving us a legitimate reason why. So I'll tell you this. Also, shout out to this is another shout out to David Yost and, and Walter Daniel Jones. They still look like teenagers with attitude. And David Yost is yoked. He's like, I was like, yo, is this all this arm definition in this game? That, that, that arm <laughs> definition was wow. how you more ripped now than when you were Billy in 1993. <laughs> yeah, I got I gotta say it, yo. That man had that trauma. He said, yo, you ain't finna hit me with them jokes when I hit <laughs> <laughs> Try that shit again. <laughs> try that shit again now. Woo. That man is yoked. Yeah. Not to say that he ever wasn't in great shape because the Power Rangers, the movie. He was also ripped. Oh, yeah. He did get a little bit more bubble. We didn't give him his yeah. credit back then. Yeah. But th- right now, this dude is, he got to have <laughs> hella action scenes, bro. Yeah, still up there. So, but before we get out of here, I do want to get y'all paying just one more thing before we, before we do. And that's one more show that DC is going to be uh, coming out with, which is Paradise Lost. So Paradise yes. Lost is going to be a prequel to Wonder Woman's time. It's going to focus on the island of Uh It's like Game of Thrones. That's what got, that's what me. caught me when he said that. Yeah, Game of Thrones. I said, oh, yo. So I just like, yo, you got that. You got the Greek mythology behind mm-hmm. this too. So it's just like, I don't even know what we're going to see, but I'm already sold on it. The, the, the fact that we don't, it's mm-hmm. like, I don't even care Wonder Woman ain't here. I don't care to see a mom. It's like, yo, I want to see the Amazons whoop ass. Here's the thing. So glad you said that, Will Ferrell. And thank you. Thank you for even reminding me what my thought was when I heard this yesterday. Paradise Lost. First of all, I've never been a fan of any. And when The Rock says any, I mean any. When you mention any prequel, to Batman. I've never been down for it. I'm not down for Alfred. I wasn't down for uh what was it called on Fox? What was it? Was Gotham. it Gotham? Gotham. I wasn't down for Gotham. I wasn't down for Alfred. I wasn't down for um uh Krypton. I wasn't down for any prequel with the superhero that I'm a fan of, not a part of it. Because when you show such a dynamic hero like Superman and you're like, "Yeah, hey, we got here's Krypton." Or when you show here we got Batman, but let's let's give all his villains to to Jane to Gordon before right. he even became. It's like I'm not down for this, right? I don't care about Alfred's relationship with Thomas Wayne before Bruce Wayne sees him be murdered and becomes his vigilante. Wonder Woman, it's a little different, and I'm gonna explain why. Wonder Woman's history is so rich. There's an island. There's an island of. Amazon women that are warriors. This is white woman king <laughs> before before woman king is even thought of. You hear me? <laughs> this is white woman king. And there are some black women on the island. And that's what I respect. So you got all of these Amazon women that are mixed within Greek mythology. And then you say it's going to be like Game of Thrones where we could have Zeus and the other gods make appearances in this show and we get a chance to see the true rich history of the Amazons, which they encounter Atlanteans, by the way, and 
that's of course the Aquaman lore, but that I'm interested in not so much as just the Aquaman lore, but like it were the Wonder Woman lore, but I love the Amazon storyline. Mm -hmm. So to be able to hear their history and then you show me Wonder Woman, now I'm even more invested. Yeah, don't forget the lantern too, because you also have the lanterns that they had to interact with as well. Very true. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I, I'm I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking to see like if he said Game of Thrones style. There's just even from the, the small things that we've seen on the island, some of the hierarchy that we've seen between the queens, some of the uh, the rituals that they have, yep. some of the logic that they follow. It's like to really be able to see that and to see it from outside of the eyes of Wonder Woman, who is just like this, you know, she's she's this outside of it. She's outside because of the fact that she's part God. So it's like to now kind of get back to where it's like, yo, these Amazonians, why they were sent there to find out why they were put there and to see like exactly what's happening to them. It's like, yo, especially you throw in the style of, of Game of Thrones. I can't wait. Because you start by talking about kings and queens and then you got the commoners and then you got uh, these these people that are warriors and then you got get the gladiator games type thing. And then you, oh God, there's so many, here's my question. Why? Right? What, what part of the larger story do they play? And that's the mystery. Because mm. oh, this I mean, is a prequel to Wonder Woman. So what story are they telling where we have to know this history? Well, now you're jumping into a further reality because we've seen lures of people going like, hey, the, the island of the Amazons is here. So you have all of these other explorers too that's going to be trying to get to this island. The intruders that's going to come here. Who's going to pop up? Like, will we see Alexander the Great? Like, will we start like, where is this really set in time? And like, who's going to come? Will Caesar make an appearance to try to get to this island? And it's just like, when are these gods set? Is it set after the time of where they're not praised? Is it in the middle of their prayers where gods are just walking around and stuff like that? There's so many options to this being able to predate Wonder Woman mm -hmm. that this is one of those that are going to be able to stand on their own to continue to keep going. And it may not even necessarily need to tie anything in just because of, like you said, the rich history it already possesses. But now this really wants this makes me want to see the new gods, which was canceled a couple of years ago that Ava yeah. DuVernay was or DuVernay was supposed to be a part of. Because now it makes me think if you're doing Paradise Lost, we got to see the new gods just because of the story aspect is so similar. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. But, you know, we shall wait and see, man. I loved it. Though. We, we shall wait and see, man. And we can yeah. keep talking DC forever. Uh, news forever. And, and we, we're going to keep getting into it for some new episodes. But, you know, these two cats are always very super busy. And I always appreciate their time coming in. And I don't want to keep them too much longer. So I want to thank both of y'all for stopping in, talking some DC, uh, DC shop with me, looking very forward to seeing what James Gunn is going to bring to this universe. But we want to know from you, what are you most excited about from the DC announcement? Is it the Superman movie? Is it the Batman movie? Is it Swamp Thing? Or some of the TV shows like Waller, The Lanterns, and Booster Gold? Let me know in the comments below what you're looking forward to. Yeah. This has been another episode of Straight Out of a Comic Book. Make sure that you look below because we got the handles there for this episode so we can make sure y'all can uh, stay tuned and update with what these talents are doing. And we will catch you next time.